What's up everyone? This is Michael. Once again, coming back with some more entrepreneurial content. If you are new to the channel and you're thinking about starting, managing, or growing your side hustle or your business, please consider subscribing to my channel. You can do that by hitting that subscribe button, also banging on that notification bell. First, I just wanna say it feels so good being back. Um, if you do not follow me on my social media, on my Instagram, especially my Instagram, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time on there. My Instagram is at Michael, duh, D-A, Antro, and that's E-N-T-R-O. My Instagram is where I post a lot of my personal, you know, just things that are happening with me. Also, in-depth situations that are happening with my business. On all my social media, I disclosed recently that I just had my tonsils taken out, which is a minor surgery. It's nothing really crazy, but it does take you out for about two weeks, and it hit me hard. So um, I did a lot of batch recording before I actually had my operation, and this video is one that I did do prior to my actual operation, but unfortunately, when I was in post, I was editing everything, I noticed that I did not do the intro. So here I am now recording the intro uh, to this. In this podcast, I have one of my good friends, her name is Nika. We actually started out as co-workers and then our lives took us in different directions. But what brought us back together, what reunited us is entrepreneurship. I'm just really excited for her to come into the podcast so she can just share her journey. Because like I said, she started out, we were co-workers and then now she's actually running her own business and she's actually really successful. So let's get into her interview right after the intro. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a, I'm an entrepreneur. Hey, 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 what? Oh, Nika, Nika, it's been some time, girl. When's the last time we we worked back in 2007 is when I came onto the Y. You was already working for the Y, right? Yeah. So first thing I like to to do with my guests is because this is all about business and we talk business. So what is your business? And then we'll get into how you started it and, and all the background to that. But like, so what's your business? What are you doing? How are you hustling? How are you making a living right now? So right now I currently have a home um, child care. It's um, art based. So I do everything through art and creative play. Um, I just feel arts are really important and they don't get, the kids don't get enough of that these days in school, unless you go to like a school that specializes in that or um, a private school, you know? So just having them be exposed, pre-exposed to that as kids goes a long way. It's a very effective way of teaching. So I base everything on that. So any, any theme we learn is gonna be through art and hands-on explorative play and creativity. And that's just with any topic. Like we go over real life stuff that's going on now because I feel it's important just, you know, to expose them to things that they're gonna deal with in society, but you can always break it down to their level. And then when you combine art with that, it's like, it's just easy, it's a no brainer, you know? Yeah, you're preaching to the choir. I, I I definitely love art, and I I do I I feel the same way about how um how it impacts, but it also like opens things up. Like you keep it really artsy, or you can really like have undertones and meanings and things behind it. So yeah, that is that's great. That's great. So what made you like start your business? Like what made you want to get into your childcare center? So. I worked for the school district for eight years before I started my child care. And my last year at the particular school I was at was rough. You know, uh, we had a new principal, so some things changed and we just didn't always vibe the best, I should say. And I had a little one, you know, my, my daughter at the time, she's 16 now, but at the time she was in kindergarten my last year for the district. And between working for the district um, all through the day and then doing after school programs after I wasn't getting home until, you know, the evening time. And I felt like I missed out on so much of her first year beginning school. So I was like, okay, I spend all this time with everyone else's kids, which is great, but I want to spend time with my own child as well. So I was like, well, why don't I just start, you know, a, a home daycare and see where this takes me. So I just, how it all kind of started yeah and i remember i remember your little baby girl she's grown now it's so crazy seeing how big she is and yeah. like seeing some of the pictures like back in like further back on your facebook it's just crazy because that, that's the little girl i remember i remember when she was still in preschool she was yeah. in the back so it's, it's just crazy and then she started dancing so i'm like dang she used to come in just mm, getting yep. it so <laughs> it's so it's great <laughs> yeah she's she's dope she's dope 
So, Thank you know, you. If, if when you see her, tell her that Michael said, you dope, girl, do your thing. She remembers your thing. you too still. Yeah, she used to come in and do the little dances when we had the dances and stuff. So <laughs> it was cute. It was real cute. But it's, it's refreshing to see kind of how you developed i know you went from in we talked because you and i both worked as i said earlier in the conversation we both worked for after school so we we met each other through work and working with kids so it's i remember you saying it you kind of brought it up a couple of times like oh yeah you know i want to start a child care center and you even like talked about the type of car that you wanted to have like i'm one day i'm gonna get this car i think it was the porsche right it was <laughs> yeah. like yeah this is gonna be the car that i'm gonna get you know so we we had those conversations and and obviously like when you in the grind when you in the nine to five it's just kind of like you know, it, it is what it is. But like, what made you like really take that next step? You know, I know you said even with like Mimi being so little and you you missing out on that. So that was like some of your motivation. But like, what made you say, you know what? I'm jumping in. I'm all in. Like what, what took what took those thoughts and took them to the next level? So honestly, like I said, my last year at the district, I mean, don't get me wrong. I loved working for the district. I loved what I did. I worked with special needs children. So that was like a passion. But that last year was just so rough that I could I I couldn't do it anymore and I was just like I like I just felt like I was worth more than what I was valued as their as their employee you know and I knew that I was talented I knew that there were things that I could do and I could give back so I literally was just like look I'm honestly tired of living from paycheck to paycheck cuz that's really what it was to be honest especially being a single parent I just was like, I'm, I'm just going to do it. Like, I'm just going to step out on faith and do it. And I knew that in the long run, I'm I'm the type that's not going to quit. So I was like, I have no options but to succeed. I have a child to take care of. So whatever it is I do, I'm, I'm going to succeed at it. So basically, just having a really rough year and realizing like what my worth really was, what I can bring. And, you know, sometimes we're at places where we do bring a lot and we, we have a lot to offer, but you're limited at some things, you know, whether it's because you don't have a degree, whether it's because seniority, you know, whether it is the amount of years you've worked there, whatever it is, or it could just be simply like, oh, I'm a female, so it might be hard to move up in this field, or I'm a male and, you know, or color, all types of things play a part in that. So I felt like the only way that I wouldn't be limited to those, like limited was to start my own. And because then I create, you know, what I create the environment, I create what we're doing. And then it was more of like, I know people would need me still because people need people to care for their kids. Yeah. So yeah. Well, kudos to you. I, first of all, I don't think I've ever said this to you since you like started your journey because life took us in different directions. But kudos to you. I'm so proud of you, Nika. Like Thank I'm you. super proud of like the woman that you've like blossomed into, the entrepreneur, and just like just to hear why you started, you know, your child care center and and what motivates you and and how you're setting yourself apart. And you're so right when it comes to like earning cap. I talk about that a lot in my channel through my content. Like some pe- people like us, we divulge ourselves in those comps and those topics of like what's my earning cap you think about your purpose every time you walk walk into work and you're like am i really getting out what i want is yeah. this really the life you know that i want to have getting home after six every single day with my young child and you know spending you know days and days away from them and, and not knowing what they're doing and like you said taking care of someone else's kids and having patience extra patience with someone else's kids but when you get home you're like snapping because you're thinking about this structure because you got to get up and go do it again so kudos to you just being able to you know take that plunge and understand your worth you know because you you being a strong black entrepreneur like there's so many different things like you said that that could work against against you and you just went against all odds and now look at you on the other side you, you're doing your thing so thank you i'm really i'm really ten years happy. in it was my 10 years in september so 10 wow. years of having this business and you know it's definitely been a blessing i mean You know, starting off, you don't know what's going to happen. And that's what people forget is that when you're an entrepreneur, you fully invest in yourself most of the time starting off. Most of the time, you don't have time to like, unless you're starting a huge company or something big, you don't have time to be like, well, let me try to see what loans or grants or this. And most of us don't want to do that, especially if you're trying to build and you know, like, I barely have money to pay for this. The last thing I'm trying to do is take out a loan now, you know? So just fully taking whatever it is you have and investing your money, whatever that may be, 
into yourself is the most, it's the best feeling. And I feel like you appreciate it more, you work harder. And like you said, you really get to know what your purpose is. You know, when I started off my childcare, the things I do now with my kids, I wasn't doing that in the beginning. It took time for me to grow into even this. Like I had an idea, but it takes time to, to master that and to start to execute those all of your skills all of your talents and I feel like every year I'm still growing even though it's been 10 years down I'm still more like how can I challenge myself how can I make this better how can I give more to these kids you know mm-hmm. yeah so I'm gonna I'm I'm poke a little bit at that so like your first year like what do you feel like were some of your biggest challenges or hurdles that you got over like that you can remember I know it's probably so far ago for so long ago but like what was that first year like Um, I think the first year is more of just like not knowing, knowing like you like this is now I don't have, you know, a company backing me or like, oh, I got the union, you know, over here. They got me covered. I'm not going to lose my job or, you know, just the old benefits, like just the little things that you forget, like, oh, I'm walking away from all of this. It's just the whole like not knowing like, okay, am I going to be successful? And then I think the hardest part was establishing the type of clientele I wanted. So oftentimes as a business, like a business owner, you feel like, oh, well, are people going to like me? Are are they going to like what my product is? Are they going to? But then you have to realize, again, that's going back to growing, knowing your worth. You're like, wait, I should be concerned too. Like, do I vibe well with these clients? Especially if you're in an industry where you have to deal with people, you know? Mm -hmm. You have to know and look for that good fit. You want them to have some of the same, um, because I'm dealing with children, so it's a little more, you know, personal. It's like Mm -hmm. family, you know, you're opening your home. So Mm -hmm. just feeling like we're on the same page. Some of my values or some of the things that I feel passionate about for children. You want to make sure they feel the same too. So I feel like just getting the right kind of clientele was really tough in the beginning. I had crazy stories. (laughs) Some things didn't go as planned. Some people was like, "Eh, I don't know. And understanding, you know, with that, you have to kind of decide is all money good money, you know, just because you have a business and you need the money because that you're the sole proprietor, you're the person who has to earn this money, make this income come in, but not just accepting anybody just because you need money. Because in the long run, you have to think of where you want your business to be. So maybe going with this client because, hey, um, they're here and I just want to fill this space. But then in the long run, it could it could be more detrimental. So I started to really hone in on like, well, when they would interview me, I'm like, well, hey, I got a few questions, too. So that helped me kind of learn like what I was looking for, too, which I think we oftentimes forget. We're so busy wanting everybody to like whatever it is we're we're offering that we're like, well, wait a minute. I want to I want to also feel value in who I'm dealing with also, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah I'd say the, the just the, the clientele thing what took a while to really get a complete hang of and just um, being able to have enough to where I at least could like cover you know your rent, your basic stuff that you needed. Mm-hmm. So just building, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, but that's a that's a big one though. Like when when you're talking about like I, I think especially with me when I first started as an entrepreneur, like a lot of people deal with. The also flip side to that too is knowing like what to charge and knowing your worth and, and what your pricing is too. Oh, because I know for me, I under all the time. I under you know priced everything because I just thought that uh, I was damn near giving it away for free. So it kind of aligns with what you're saying. Like you find you you look and and strategically go after a certain clientele. Oh, absolutely. Because they fit well with you, but then you also back it up with you know what your what your business model is and being able to say, but this is what I deliver. This is what I bring to the table, and we, what you bring to the table, and then that's where you get those those great relationships and and those clientele that come back. So. My next question for you is, is how, how do you do that? You did say that, like, obviously you have like a, with working in childcare, you have like an onboarding process. So like the kids seek out you and they come in, they do tours and things like that. But if, if someone else was trying to, you know, start a business or they already have a business and you're talking to them and asking them or giving them some game on how they can seek the right clientele, like what would be some advice? Like what would be some tools that you would give them? Questions, however you, however, whatever you would say to them. Well, what you just said, really like stuck out because that's very true 
I think the biggest thing too is you attract what you feel like your worth is, so to speak, sometimes. Like for the most part, you're gonna bring in what you give out. So like you said, most business people, we undercut ourselves. And then, but if you, but I learned this through the type of business I do. If you do that, it kind of changes, it can change the clientele that you have. You know what I mean? Elaborate. No, elaborate, elaborate. I kind of know, but (laughs) elaborate. So like when I first started off, I charged way less and I had all types of people come you know and Mm -hmm. some don't get me wrong some literally were like look this is what I can afford cool and they were genuinely good people so we had a good working relationship because that's another thing you have to understand that there are going to be some times where you might be a little flexible but it's not just not just across the board it's kind of like case by case basis Mm -hmm. you know um and I feel like once I really started saying, like once I got through my first year and I'm like, okay, I know what I want to do. I changed pricing. I changed, I figured out like my niche obviously is creativity. I'm good at art. I'm good at, so if I bring that within the program, then I can give this price and it would be fair. I would, I feel like, because I'm offering, you know, oh, all the kids have art supplies. All of the kids um, will be learning through art. So that means it's not going to be just, oh, I'm babysitting and you're watching TV because that was a big stigma attached sure. to having a child care. And I was like, oh, absolutely not. That that Don't, don't associate me with that because that's not what I do. So right. I feel like knowing, always having a niche. If whatever business you have, whatever it is you offer, knowing what exactly your strength is and wrapping that into what you do because if people are looking for your specific strength they're gonna pay what what it is you charge if that's really what they want and if you really deliver so i think that's the biggest thing being able to know what you're strong at and delivering it you know at all costs because then they can't say like they'll know it's worth it it may be like i have parents who are still like Oh yeah, childcare is expensive, but I I'll pay whatever for them to come to you, or I'd pay whatever to keep them in your program because of everything you offer us. So once you have that established and you're and you're confident in that, and you you execute that, it's really hard for anything else to like kind of knock you knock you off because you already know you know, yeah. and you've already proven that not just to them but to yourself, so you know. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. that's a big thing. Confident, ex- knowing what you're good at and just actually executing it. And like you said, don't don't settle for like don't in the beginning, I will say I feel like in the beginning it's good to start off, you know, maybe being a little fair with your prices, not not making it where it's less for you, but just fair. Maybe a nice little middle ground. You can always start off and say, this is where I'm going to start, but this is where I want to be. You know what I mean? So, and then just go from there. Cause you can always continue to grow. Like I, I just continue to step it up and keep revamping, keep being more creative. So then that gave me wiggle room to be like, now I can charge this. Cause I just added this into the program. So that, that that's a, like when you were talking about like knowing what your worth is and knowing like what what you're giving and backing it up. I think it's the same thing like with a Mercedes Benz and cars that we drive and purses that are bought and phones like people are going to go out and they're going to spend money on these phones because they know that they're good phones. Yeah. So I think I the other thing that I took away from that is like, don't just overprice. You just said that, like, don't just overprice. It's overprice. But you got to get your feet wet, put yourself out there and execute, focus on executing. And then the clientele will start coming and you'll start, then you'll start getting the experience to vet out. and like, mm, you said this, or mm, this is something that someone else did. Yeah. I, I, I need to, let me stay away. Let me move this way, you know, which is, which is really good. So my next question for you, obviously when you first started your, your childcare center, you didn't have someone come in and, and just give you a whole boatload of money and all that good stuff and just give you all this, like all this advice I'm assuming. So how did you, how did you learn about like the business side and was like, what resources, who like, did you talk to your mom? Like, where did you find, like, where did you get this? Cause most people are just starting on their own and they don't have that extra support. So where did you find yours? 
Um, I would say definitely like my mom was a big support, you know, but a lot of it, honestly, you, it, it's similar to the experience I give the kids. If you don't let them get their feet wet, touch, explore, figure it out, kind of do things and make mistakes in the process, you won't learn. So I had to do a lot because even my mom, like she's never owned a, her own business. She's never ran a child care. So she was there like, hey, you know, just to kind of hold my hand, like just to be supportive, cheer me on. And if I needed anything, she helped with that. But I honestly learned most of it through just trial and error, literally. And I, like I said, I feel like the biggest thing was is me understanding that I'm fully responsible for funding my business. You know what I mean? I had to get very smart with money, which means any debts that I had, honestly, the first thing I did when I started and started kind of bringing in money consistently, I paid off everything that needed to be paid off. Because if I want to fully invest in my business, I can't have extra things hanging over my head because that's going to stop you from getting to your goal. If you have all these bills from, you know, prior things, or you owe this, or I had, you have a credit card. Like I had stuff like that because Again, I went from working for the district making X, X amount of dollars to work making this amount. So it was like, oh, first thing I'm going to do is pay off everything. Now I have free, now I have extra money because all that's taken care of to com- continue to put into my business the things that I want to put into it. So really I learned through child and error but what I will say now there's when I started 10 years ago there weren't that many resources like we have now like even you having this podcast people can listen to this and they're like oh I didn't think about that we didn't it wasn't like social media was going but it wasn't like what it is now think about it it's my space <laughs> like right. that's about my space <laughs> Facebook you yeah. know and Facebook yeah. was very like minimal people weren't on there there's all these groups now that help and do you know so there's ways now that you can find more more help more information if you were like dang well i'm starting a business i don't really know what i should look for i don't really know how to budget for this there's Mm -hmm. things like this are great outlets for people to 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 go to go to you know some people may not have a person in their family who knows or like me i was just blessed to kind of already you know my mom was a single parent i learned a lot about us growing up and how she budgeted and how when she had credit cards and like how that can be not the best at times you know so watching those things just let me learn like to be smart and to make sure you always everything that you have is already paid for or taken care of because you can have a million dollar company but if you have all these outstanding things because you're still living beyond your means you'll never see that money so mm-hmm. I feel like making sure your finances are in order so you can fully give back to yourself and to your business the way you want to, that is like huge, you know? It's a huge risk. I mean, you kind of hit it on a nail a little bit right now when you were talking about like, I just I just recently recorded a video and I'm going to be releasing, releasing it on how you should pay yourself through your business. Mm-hmm. So like, what, what are your thoughts on that? Like, obviously you said you went from paying it yourself or getting getting paid you had a w-2 job and then you started working for yourself so what was that transition like from you like writing getting checks and picking them up and getting them direct deposit to you actually saying hmm how much am i going to pay myself like what what was that thought process and, and and how did you execute it like what did you feel like was fair for you to pay yourself or did you just invest all of it like give us give give us some insight to that um i think so with child care it's a, it's a little different so <laughs> My whole thing is, this is how I looked at it. This is how I, this is me just being real of how I looked at it when I first went into business. I didn't really know or think about any of that. All I thought in my head is, and it dawned on me literally at the after school program. You know how we used to have to be outside watching the kids while they play or do whatever their outdoor play. I just looked at them and I started counting how many kids were here. And I was like, well, obviously I'm going to start off small. So I knew I did the research. So I knew, okay, I can only have a license for eight kids starting off cool and I said but you gotta think eight kids and I said even if my base was I think I was like okay maybe if I did 700 a month per kid you got I started just doing the math like okay seven times eight that's 5600 I'm like okay 
that's way yeah. more than I make now. That's not bad. I wasn't even thinking of like, oh, well, what about, you know, solely for my overhead. Family. All yeah. I thought in my head is I'll be making like Cha-ching. three to four <laughs> times more than what I'm making. So at the end of the day, that's yep. all that matters. Now, as I started to grow and do better and realize like, oh, I'm worth this and that. That's when I kind of went up and was like, okay, well, what's fair? Realistically, you know, I kind of budgeted out like, well, what? Do, how much money am I putting back into my business each month? How much money do I want to save? And how much money do I want to have to be able to like just enjoy life or be comfortable? And then I kind of was like, okay, well, now I can increase because I'm two years in. I offer this or that, you know? And that's kind of how I built on mine just because like you said, when you first start off, you really don't know. And it also depends on what type of business you have, you know? I'm blessed to wear like with mine, I have wiggle room to to increase price based on what I offer. But then I also, it's based on how many kids I have. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it just depends on how you run your, how, like what service you offer or what your business mm-hmm. is. But for sure, I, I the transition, like you said, was a big difference. For me, like you said, I was just like, oh, I'm about to be balling. So either way it goes. <laughs> Yep. You know, I, I didn't yep. put too much thought in it because I just yeah. felt like, well, I got seven kids. Even if I charge this much, that's not much. That's still way more money than what I normally would make, you know? Yep. But then, yep. like you said, you do reevaluate and say, well, I'm not about to No, I'm worth more than, you know, I do this and that. And this is a whole day with your child. So mm-hmm. I definitely need to charge more than... 700 a month, you know? So then it kind of went from there. And like I said, me knowing what my strength was is and building that into my program, that was the biggest transition. Anybody can just say, oh, I have a child's care. And what people do is they look at you like a glorified babysitter. They think they picture you're just babysitting kids, keeping them alive until their parents get off work. So most people are like, if you tell them, I charge $1,000 for that, they're looking like, for what? Like you just watch mm-hmm. my kid. But if you yep. say no, actually, um, it's an art based childcare. We learn everything through experience, through hands on play. We go through different themes each month. And I serve vegetarian meals. That changes everything. People are like, well, that is worth that is worth a thousand a month or whatever you decide to charge, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. So yep. that's yep. kind of how it's for me. It's, it's, Money is always a big thing. I, I, crazy. I just, I'm like batch recording. Sorry. I'm like recording a lot of stuff right now. But another video that I'm going to be releasing is like cash flow and understanding like operating cash flow and, and finance and, and all that good stuff. So it's, it's something that I've talked to a lot of entrepreneurs about. I got a lot of people DM me about like, man, how much should I pay myself? And, you know, how much should I invest into my business? And you're right. It is going to depend on what business you're in, what industry you're in to figure out what's appropriate. It also depends on your lifestyle. And I like how you talked about chopping and getting rid of debt. Anyone that has money, that is someone that we all look up to. Like, man, I want to have what that person has. I guarantee you they've paid off their debt. They're not sitting around with debt. So that is just by far one of one some of the best advice that like I think that people should get. My next question is when one of the, one of the biggest another big topic for like startup entrepreneurs is they get afraid of that legal. They get afraid of like do I have the right permits? Do I have the right, you know, uh licenses? Like what's and especially with a child care, I know that you had to make sure there was a lot of things that were taken care of. So how did you seek that information? Like, how did you attack that challenge of making sure that you were like took hold and ready to go for someone that's looking to start a business? So for me, the good thing is like for childcare, we do have a lot of like support, you know, especially starting off, you tend to need it less once you know the business. But basically I went to, like I said, we're li- I'm licensed through the state of California, so mm-hmm. I would reach out to them. And then we have to do trainings and things. So anything, like if you're passionate about something and you're going to start a business, I say you have to do your first, your own research, all your mm-hmm. own groundwork, footwork, look at what it is you'll need. Is this, is this you know, obtainable? Am I able to get these things? Because if, if, if I was trying to start 
you know, some huge million dollar company, I'd probably probably be a little more trickier than, you know, starting a daycare. So I'd have to look at, well, gosh, how much money would I need off top to to do this, you know? Mm -hmm. But for me, it was a little easier because I slowly like invested, but again, I did the research of what all I needed to have just to even make this possible. So I had to have my own place. I had to make, okay, check, got that together. You have to make sure it's okay because I was renting at the time. You had to get it signed off by your manager. So you got to make sure, well, do I have a manager who's going to be okay with this or, you know, give me a hard time. So I had to deal with that. So I just feel like, the first thing is you got to do all your own research first to even make sure like, can I do these things? And if you have, and give yourself a time frame. like if you want something done, if you want to be able to start your business in six months, then you got to make sure you know, like, is this obtainable in six months? Can I do whatever groundwork I need to do in six months? And then again, there's going to be people talking to people, you know, people such as yourself, other entrepreneurs or people that you may met that are that are in a similar field. They might work for a company doing what it is you're trying to branch off and do. Reach out to those resources, you know. Um, my godmom has had a child care for like 24 years. So I asked her, even though I had a different vision on how I was going to do my I asked her certain questions like, hey, you know. What, what should I do if this happens? Or what's the process with this? Because those were things I was unsure of. So I reached out to her and, um, you know, my mom again, she, my mom happened to work for the state at the time. So I came to her like, hey, you know, where's the building I need to go to? I feel like just networking is a mm-hmm. big thing. Networking and having a good supportive group of people and trying to talk to even people you don't know because I found a lot of you find information from people you don't know just from networking and talking Mm -hmm. and um, again there's so many more resources than when I started off you can pretty much find everything so now if people are researching things it's like do you really want to know the information because there's pretty much any way to find it it's out here now you know versus me I had to just rely on like I said, the the people I knew or um, the state, I would call them and I would call and I would ask questions like even getting licensed. It's a process and um, you have to wait until they like randomly show up and decide to to check out your your spot and make sure it's set up for the kids. But I had a deadline. So I called I called like probably every other week. And I was like, I don't care if it gets on your nerves. Like, Good for you. If you, you know, this is what I want to do. And literally the lady was like, you know what? I'm just going to come and see you because yeah. you can like, Okay, me. Nika. Okay. You and know me by name. Yeah. <laughs> you like, know my badge number. <laughs> okay. I'll come. <laughs> yeah. So being persistent too, you know, once you do your research and you know, you got to be persistent. You got to just be like, hey, check this out. I'm going to keep bothering you until I get yep. my end result. Yep. So, so how, how long did you give yourself? Like when you actually, you said you were at work because normally that's where it, where it happens. That's where the, the ideas start juicing and going is when you're at your job and you're thinking about your business, your soon to be business. So like how long did you give yourself like from that moment of like, okay, I think I'm doing the numbers to actually like 10 toes to the pavement. Like how long did you give yourself? Well, I really... Honestly, I had been thinking about it and I, in, in, in May. So this was May towards the end of the school year, getting towards the end of the school year. I mean, we worked at year round school. So what we went until July, July, late July. July. Yeah. Okay. So I turned in my paperwork, like my full application and all that in May. And I was like, I have to be working before the school year starts because at the time I was trying to get a transfer out of that school because I didn't want to work there anymore because of the principal. Mm-hmm. I didn't think they were to give me the transfer. So I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have this going by September or else I have no job, you know? Mm-hmm. I was literally down to my last, um, cause I had stuff going on with work. I had taken leave and stuff. So at this point, my last check was only gonna be $600 and that was gonna be in September. That's all I had to my name. That's it. Wow. I was broke back then. So I didn't really have a savings. Yeah. I had nothing. So yeah. 
I was like, oh my gosh, my last check in September, that's it. So I was like, I have to be licensed by September. So we start school usually the day after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. um, I called her the following week, like on that Friday before uh, Labor Day, which is on Monday. And that's when she said she would come. Like I called that week. So I was like, I have to get her to come. I'm, I am i don't know what I'm going to do for money. And literally. So it wasn't that I necessarily, I, I guess you can say I gave myself, how many months was that? June, July, August, September. That's about four. About four, four months. months. Yeah, not even yeah, that. Perfectly. Not even I that. No, <laughs> that's like three. Yeah, I didn't really have a choice. Like yeah. it would have been nice to have a little more time, but. I think that's what lit a fire under me. Like I was going to get it done by any means like (laughs) necessary at this point. But I will say for most people, at least give yourself a year's time at least because you want to have enough time to research and you don't want to be rushed on what you're trying to do. Like I just started off. I had no website, no nothing. Those are things that I would probably change now in hindsight, but sometimes you don't you don't give, you know, you're yeah. not given those opportunities. You just nope. got to be like, this is what I'm doing. Gonna, if I wait any longer, I wasn't, I couldn't wait any longer, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. T- timing. They always say timing is, is a big thing. And a lot of people like they sit on the edge of that diving board and they never like fully commit and jump in. And, and I like how I always like to ask that. Cause you know, some people, they don't give themselves time at all. They just say, I'm, I'm gone. I'm just doing it. I quit my job. And for like for you, especially you being a single uh, a single parent taking care of your young baby, like we go through those things all the time. I just recorded a, a podcast with my pop father yesterday and he, we talked about it and he was like, yeah, man, like as a as a parent or whatever you want to call it, like it's really difficult because we we're not just single. We're not just out there just, you know, eating top ramen for ourselves. Like we have to look at the, the little baby that's in the back seat in the car seat um asking for you know food and for clothes and stuff so shout out to you for like really putting a fire under yourself to say i'm gonna i'm gonna get it done i'm gonna get it yeah. done yeah. so <laughs> after, after you started your business like when because everyone kind of has that moment where you just sit back and you're like man i like did this like this is me like when, how long did it take for you to like sit back and look at your business and be like dang i'm actually doing this Honestly, immediately. <laughs> I feel like after, like, I started in September, mm-hmm. I think November, I felt like, oh, and I really wasn't even really doing that. Then I had like three kids, but, <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell no, actually I had four kids because I, I, I had a family that I first, my first clients was a family of three mm-hmm. and, um, I had them and then I said, okay, so I still had the little, like I said, I had my 600, my last little check mm-hmm. from the district. And the reason it was so low at that time was because I took leave and stuff. So mm-hmm. after you take some, you, you just get paid whatever it is you have left basically on the books or whatever. Yep. You know, for yep, your yep. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, I use that towards my rent. And I mm-hmm. said, as long as by the next month I can pay my rent. I'm not even tripping. Like I hope there, hope there should be a little bit left for groceries, but if not, I'll just go shopping at my mom's house. Like, yep. <laughs> like so then why you here? She already got a bag. <laughs> taking Literally. milk, eggs, taking all the essentials. <laughs> yes, but I was like, as long as the place that my business is ran from is paid and taken care of, I'm good. So once I had that family. I was like, okay, I want to have at least another kid or two by November. November came, I got another child. Then right after that, there was another one lined up. So by the time I had like maybe five kids, four to five kids, you have to think, I went from making probably 2,000 a month Mm -hmm. to like double that in a second you know so for me I was like I I got this this was a matter of months you know I thought I was doing big things you know but of course you know more comes along later on to that but still yeah I feel like within the first few months I was successful I had I had a little bit of a clientele and then I knew how to get kids after that like I knew what to do and that was the thing don't get me wrong it was hard to get my first Set that first family, it was not easy. I literally found them on Craigslist. Actually, my friend found them. I had my friends like looking on Craigslist for people who put up 
posts about needing childcare. And then I made flyers and I was at Walmart in school areas, passing out flyers to people, just talking to strangers. Oh, I have a childcare, blah, blah, blah. Do you have kids? I met some people just from doing that. And a couple of them, it didn't end up working out or whatever, but they still came to my, they still came to my home. They still checked me out. And then they told other people. So I just kind of, I was just out there like really on my grind trying to get people. Do your thing. You know, <clears throat> that's super funny because I think every entrepreneur has had that moment where they're like, dude, they're getting ready to walk out of the house. They got whatever their marketing tools are. They're like, dang, I'm about to do this. I'm about to go and like put myself out there and, and really promote my business. Like this is going to be crazy. And I think every entrepreneur has had that moment. But what makes what motivates me is I'm like, I've done this for businesses before person yeah, <laughs> like when you at the mall Literally, i was like now every time i saw somebody with kids you know i got a daycare do you have you know like i was yeah. just yeah. going to random yeah. people and like i said you know you always like you see you've seen people i'm sure like when we're out in the world pass out flyers for stuff or even people who pass, used to pass out their mixtapes or their cds remember that like everybody be on mm-hmm. yeah walmart target like, <laughs> all the time what? like i don't want to be bothered but i was that person and i was like oh you're gonna hear my story and i'm gonna pass you this flyer about my daycare whether you need it or not tell your friend tell somebody but it's very yeah. humbling also and then you just know how how much more you appreciate it once you get to a point where like now I don't have to do I have a website and I have I'm on Yelp but I really don't do anything I have people who be like oh I told these three co-workers of mine and now they're reaching out to me begging me like can you please put me on the wait list what do I need to do and I'm like I remember when I was at Walmart just going up like here I have a daycare <laughs> you know yep. what it is yep. good for you good for you it's that's that's an that's that's an amazing feeling because I've had that too where you get that referral feeling, and um, it's it's but it's tough though it's a tough grind in the beginning oh. like just to say the least like how you said like that first year even even though you did have some success but I think also you should credit yourself like I know you said doing a child care center was new but it was good that you went into something that you already were passionate yeah. about I think that that's a good thing you did you weren't motivated like oh I want to make more money obviously like we're human beings and money is what allows for us to take care of ourselves so obviously that does have to be a part of the conversation but i do like how you said in your story like you know i i worked with kids i i I enjoyed working with special needs and you took something that you already were doing that you already have built many years of experience doing and you said okay well let me go do this on my own and and i think that's that's refreshing that's great to know you know there are people out there like you that are caring alike caring about babies because there's a lot of child care centers especially home child child care centers that are yeah Lord I hear Jesus. all the stories. Mm-mm. That's the reason they regulate us so Mm-mm. hard because the the stuff you hear and you're like, why would anybody yeah. do that with someone's child, like or their baby? And I feel like too, a lot of it is because it is for the money because you can make good money in childcare. But I feel like if you actually are passionate about it and you want to do more than just babysit, like if you have things you want to teach kids, like I knew what I wanted to teach kids, I knew what I wanted to place in their lives. So I was like, well, I want to incorporate everything that I think is important or that I did with Mimi. I wanted to incorporate that to, into other children. And it's nice because I have a diverse group and I have a lot of parents who are more progressive um, and want their mm-hmm. children to learn about, you know, that there are people of different color, that there are, because that was another thing that was scary for me in the beginning was because you know, I'm a black woman. I lived in North Park, which was mm. cool because North Park is very diverse. You know, that, oh, yeah. that was love a blessing. But also mm. it was still scary because I have to meet strangers. They're already kind of like, oh, I don't know this person. And you're going to be caring for my baby, you know? And then yeah. it was like, will they be judging me or thinking anything because I'm a black woman? So I was very, that was yeah. very scary at first. But, you know... Mm. You just you just get used to it, you grow, and then you realize that there's a lot of people who aren't worried about it, and the people who do care, you know, you don't, I didn't want those clients anyway. So, That's what I was going to say, they're not your clientele. So, so. it didn't matter. So, and then <laughs> yep. all the ones that did come to me, they loved what I brought, what I offered, and yeah. 
you know, they didn't care that I was young. Oh, and that was nothing. I was young at the time, you know, and I look young. Yeah. So even though when yeah. I started my child, yeah. she's tiny, y'all. She's like four, eight. <laughs> I'm just... She's tiny. She like the size of a third grader. <laughs> yeah. So they thought me. I'm talking smack. I'm like six one. So everybody's tiny to me sometimes. <laughs> yeah, they thought like I, I thought yeah. that they were gonna be looking like who's this young little eighteen year old? And I was like, first oh. of all, I'm twenty. I think I was twenty. Six, yeah, twenty six when I started my childcare, but I'm still that's still young, you know. Like it's, it is like, young. Well, you're, it is you're young. gonna take care of your kids. They're looking like what? But Mimi was yeah. also a good selling point. They would meet Mimi when she was a little Nate, so they'd be like, "Wow, well, her daughter's so sweet, so well behaved." Let's yeah, do she's something, amazing. right? Yeah. <laughs> Please and thank you and everything. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's crazy. So my next question is like, where do you see your business now? Like, obviously, like as a business owner, we we always think of like, what's the next steps? What do I want to do? How do I want to grow? Um, what's your plan? What do you what are you planning on? Without obviously, if it's not proprietary, but like, where do you see your business growing? Uh, going? How do you feel like you're going to grow it? Like, what's on your to do list this upcoming year so, and years to come? Funny you should ask, but um, so. When I started my day, once I started my child care, I, like I said, every year I wanted to like add something new, learn a new skill, work on something new. Um, and, you know, edu- the educational side of it is always been a passion, but combining that again, like I said, with art. So right now I'm currently working on some things because here at my child care, I write all of our curriculum. So like some people use different um, programs or they use different people who do curriculum. I decided to do my own just because I was like, I want to be creative. I want to teach what I want to teach in the way I want to teach it. So I do a lot of things through song also. So I write all of our songs we learn and I teach them to our, the kids. Um, I do poems. So we do poems. We learn through poems as well. And I teach them all that. So I'm currently, I have another part of my business that I've started to develop. It's called Exploring Developing Minds. And that is basically the backside of it on the curriculum side. And because not everybody can come to my childcare, but I wanted to get what I do out for everyone. So that's what's in the works right now. So I'm working on that. Good job. You know, I don't want to work until I'm, I, I've been, I've always been like, uh, I don't want to work till I'm like 60 or whatever. I don't want to retire then. I want to be able to retire, honestly, when I'm 45. So that means I have to have other things going on. So if I have ways of getting what I do for my kids here out, then that's what I'm going to do. So that's what I'm working on. And I'm also, I'm passionate about, you know, educating parents and other um, educators just in general. You know, we all work with kids, but there is no manual to that. Everybody does things differently. Everybody has their strengths and areas with kids. So my big thing is educating parents who are, especially first-time parents. I had so many first-time parents and they, the things that were common sense to me, they really just genuinely didn't know. And it wasn't because they're not educated or they're not smart. You just don't know. Every child has a different personality. Everyone has different needs. But because I work with kids in so many different, from so many backgrounds, so many different ages, I'm very confident. I kind of pretty much know off top, like, this is what you should start off with if you're potty training, or this is what you should do if they're having trouble sleeping. So that's another passion of mine, getting out there and being able to educate and whether it be like what you're doing, you know, or if it's been like little Zoom workshops, those are other things that I'm working on because I get asked so much all the time or people come to me for so much and I'm like, I don't mind giving free game, but I also was like, oh, you know, that's another opportunity to help educate parents, even when they're first putting them in a child care, what to look for in a child care, what they can do to help transitioning from being at home with your parent to a child care. I, a lot of parents don't know those. Sorry. So how to my Hi. Daughter. Oh, she's so cute. Okay. okay. Put yourself away. You seen her little shadow. She was peeking her head through. She's like, daddy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Girl, just get over here and get on the right. camera. But go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. But to um, yeah, so I, I was pretty much done, so it's fine. But um, 
So those are the things that I'm working on. And I see my business being able to reach other people, other parents, other educators. You know, I want them to be like, hey, we want to do use the exploring, developing minds, you know, curriculum. So got those things in the process. I told myself that I no longer wanted to do things that stayed in like two weeks. You know, you get paid at the end of two weeks and that's it. Like I wanted to start like creating things that allow for me to be able, like you said, retire. Because once you create that curriculum and how awesome and great it is, like you're putting in that grind right now, making sure, you know, the prep is good and the materials that they need and how they're going to execute it, how they're going to talk about it. What's the follow up? What's the debrief? All those different things. You went through all your goal that to put all that stuff together. But once it's done, you know, you can make money off of that forever and I love I love that that's like one of the things that I I try to just spread to everybody I'm like everyone should have something that especially if you're creative like you should your art should work for you you create it once and it continuously makes you money and that's like that's how you really start to reach financial freedom and I just I kind of want to dig a little bit into that when it comes to like your business because one of the I say the biggest question that I get is How do you scale and how do you take yourself out of the business and create systems? Because I know like for you, when you started out, it was just you. Like you were doing mostly everything yourself, watching the kids. But as you started to grow, like what are some of the things that you do to say, okay, I need to bring in someone else. And how do you create those systems? Obviously, you're a smart woman. You're a smart business owner because you're already talking about curriculum and spreading that and getting getting it out there. But how, how would you give game to someone that is looking to either bring someone on like what are some things that you look for to say okay let me step away or let me build something to help this system so i have an assistant and it's crazy because my assistant is my best friend we've known each other since second grade and she was one of my first clients too her son is her son and mimi are the same age mimi's 10 days older than her son so when they were little and i first was gonna start everything he was he was like one of my first clients too so even though it was just after school care it was still like you know so she decided like oh she was like well I want to volunteer at least once a week or whatever and I'm like sure okay so I got her set up so she'd come once a week and um she had we had a we had a big so like I said she's my best friend we're so close she knows my family but unfortunately my aunt passed away in 2017 like tragically and it was very unexpected and when that happened because we're so close she worked in um the hospital setting um she worked for scripts and after everything happened with my aunt and just you know I guess being in the environment of the hospital 24 7 she worked in a unit where people pass away quite often she worked in the cardiac unit and um she took a leave of absence from work and then she came and would be like, well, I, I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to come volunteer more days. And she wanted to take a different direction. So I was like, so, you know, getting a little busy. Want to work for me? And so she's been working for me since 2017. But because it's in my home, for me, the biggest thing was is someone I can trust to be literally like in my home or if I'm not available she has to be available someone I could trust with kids because that's what's hard too with children finding people who have that passion you have for kids and no matter how frustrating a situation may be not snapping not wanting to you know shake them or do whatever it is so that was really hard so for me it was more like I wanted people who I knew like my mom helps also because she's retired now. So she's on my license as well, but she's family. So because of the type of job I have, it was more so like as far as someone I could really trust, you know, and people that I knew were good people to be around children. But for other businesses, you know, again, it always depends on what your business is, but finding someone who has that, who believes in your vision, that's the biggest thing. She's, she's helped me like throughout this time now, like even when I'm working on my curriculum and other things, I can completely count on her to 
be there and, and help me with the kids and to support because she believes in my vision. She sees what I do. She sees the work and the time I put into it. So it, it excites her. It's not her dream or her goal, but she's just like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. Like, I wish we had these opportunities when we were kids or when our kids were growing up. So because she believes and she sees my passion, she supports me 100%, which helps things run smooth. Like, Having an assistant who believes in what you're doing is so important because there are days where there's stuff you can't get done. Like, and I never thought I'd ever be busy to where I'm like, oh, I need my assistant to handle it. It sounds so cliche. You see it on TV, like, oh, my assistant. And they go get my coffee and run errands. No, like real life, an assistant, that's the goat, right? Like they, they help you out more than you ever will realize. So you have to have people around you who literally believe in your dream and they see what you, where you've started and where you are. And people that are going to cheer you on and support you, they're not jealous. They're not like, well, you make this and they, you know, you got to be careful of that because those are a lot of things that have interfered with a lot of people's businesses too, you know, the type of people you bring on, you know? So I feel like that's why networking also is important because I feel like the more you network with a lot of people, you learn people, you kind of get to know and learn. You can see people like, oh, this person's genuinely like supports me or this person, uh, I don't know, you know, you start to learn just from meeting people, putting yourself out there more, you know, but um, again, it's just having people who really believe in what you're doing and that are, they believe in your passion. They see your passion too. Um, that goes a long way because you need support for sure, when you're starting your own business, you're going to need so many, you're going to need people that you didn't even realize, you know, you need. And I'm very thankful for the assistant I have, because you see, I had technical difficulties. You see who was handling it for me, because <laughs> I'm not good with technical stuff. So she helps me with like my website. When we built my first website from the ground up, she helped me with that. So, you know, you got to know who your allies are and you know, keep them around you and you show them love and support them, you know? So anything she needs, like what what I can, whatever I can do to help her further, whatever she's trying to do, I got her now, you know, because you did it for me. So that's important for sure. The, the best thing that I took away from what you just said is, and I, I've, I've yet to have an entrepreneur, like put it like that. Um, recruitment is not the one thing that they that they've said, you know, and and it's it's refreshing to hear you say like someone that genuinely like cares about you, they know it, and you also dropped it, which I feel like that's one of the reasons why you have been successful is because you said it when you were talking and getting talking to people and getting people to know about your business, you talked about a story, and advertisement one on one business one on one is you know like you said there's so many different. A child care center is out there. I own a graphics and printing company. So there's so many different graphics and printing out there. You can get it off, offshore. You can get it onshore. You can get it down the street. So <clears throat> you have to define like what makes you different. And what makes us different is our unique stories. Mm -hmm. Like what, what made you get into child care and what set you apart from, you know, that mom and not mom and pop, but that, that, uh, uh, home daycare down the street what sets you up different from tiny tots and petites and all those other things like what makes your child care different and so but I, I i do think investment in people and people that invest in you are are a huge thing to the to the growth of your business Definitely. um that's crazy that's crazy well it was really refreshing talking to you nika it sucks that it took so long for us to connect and, i and know and, that's because yeah. i don't on social media a lot and i see you don't really be either so i was like look i always would be like i wonder how mike hell is and you want to know the craziest part my mom literally asked about you a week before we even talked about this and i'm like i told my mom you spoke him up because we ended up talking and now i'm gonna do his podcast and she was like oh wow because she like she remembered you and was like where where is he what happened to him yeah yeah it's, it's crazy my journey my journey through um like dancing i did i did a lot of stuff with that um and it, it took me very far honestly 
Um, I did a lot of things, but right now it's just my, my, my mind is shifted and you're right. I, I wasn't on social, show show. I wasn't on social media <laughs> for, for some time. And the reason why I wasn't on social media is just because I didn't feel like I needed to be that person that is like always in people's faces. Mm-hmm. Man, I don't know my password. Oh, that's why. My bad. <laughs> Hold on. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't want to be that person that was like all in people's faces because I don't think that it's important for people to really like know my life. That's how I felt. Now I feel like it's important for me to it's important for me to like share my journey. And that's the reason why like I'm happy that you said you brought that up. Like I started this podcast and I started my YouTube channel with the goal in mind was to be able to share my journey as it is. Like I don't I didn't want to be that person like I pop up and oh look I pull up in a Lamborghini like look you want to know 10 ways of how I made a million dollars like no like I even if I don't ever become a millionaire I still want to be able to impact people yeah. I want people to because I know when I started my business just very similar to you because we kind of been starting our businesses at the same time and doing what we're doing and hustling like there's no resources out there for people let alone that look like us and that come from the background of like not going to a, a for get a four-year degree yep. you know or BA in that like we're literally just taking our our intuition our passions and just starting businesses and I wanted to actually be a, a beacon for people and say hey like this is how I did it this is what I do in my business this this is how I've navigated it this is what I'm doing this is how I'm going this is all the different steps that I'm taking I'm trying to give as much game as I can because at the end of the day I want someone to come back to me like man I started my business based off of your videos yeah. and and it's just that's great I, I have had some people come to me and say man this is really cool i like this resource or whatever so that's what makes me happy and if i could turn this into a full-time gig the goal for me is to hold webinars bring in you know uh uh business accountants to be able to like actually educate people and say hey you can come to this location you can register if you want to start a business and you want you know all the research you can come and start your business you can come and fill out all your paperwork get your fictitious business name you can sign up and do your llc with the sos and get everything going like that's a type of impact that i want to have on this community of entrepreneurs because like you said i, I would want to go back and help right the nika in the first year rather than you just kind of be like Trial and just figuring it out, like, <laughs> right? I hope this works. <laughs> Literally, yeah. I hope. <laughs> and that's, I'm a, I, and that's yeah. important what you said because that's part of the reason too that I was like, oh, I want to do workshops or like you said, webinars because I've had people be like, well, how how did you even start a daycare? They don't even know those simple things. I knew because my mom worked in the same building as where they license you, so I kind of knew like, okay, I got to go to this building. I don't know what all that entails, but I even knew where to go. Some people don't even know where to go. So it's important that there's so many people like us out there. So it's so important to, like you said, tell them like, well, this is what I did. This was the biggest thing I needed to do or start first. You know, you mentioned the fictitious business name. When I started exploring developing minds, I had to learn about that. You know, I had to get all that done. I didn't know, you know, but through networking and talking to people and I knew someone who had started then I went from there so what you're doing is super dope because it helps if people are really tuning in and listening and you continue to have the guests that you do have you probably will bring in so many different people and it's it's guaranteed to reach it's guaranteed that there's at least five people listening that are like I wanted to do that and Michael just had this person come on and now I kind of feel better about it or I have some insight so what you're doing is like amazing too because if I had have had this type of stuff I'd have been listening all the time like okay I'm trying to start daycare I hope I hope I learned something or I hope he covers something about this because a business is a business they're all different but there's still certain things I feel like you starting points are going to be similar for all businesses. You know, it all starts off with research. You know, it all starts off with knowing how do you obtain, like get to this point, you know, Mm -hmm. whether you have licenses, whether you just need a fictitious business name, whether you need a building, those are all things that we all have in common. So just doing this, it, it, it's 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 like helpful you know people have resources now so like look i'm like look all these entrepreneurs if you don't do it i'm like look are you really serious yeah. or are you just playing exactly because <laughs> i'm like we came from where there wasn't they didn't have all this oh. yet 
Nobody was doing all this yet, you know? Nope. The last thing I want to do, Nika, is I, I love to give the last 30 seconds of all of the podcast episodes just for the guests to just promote themselves. How can people find you? Just remind them of your services and, you know, social medias and all that of how they can get a hold of you if they need your services. It's all you, girl, to go away. All right. So my business, like I said, I have a child care, a home child care um, art based. It's called Mimi's Place Community named after my daughter because you know she was big inspiration of why I started it um so I specialize in infant to toddler care so basically from newborns up until four I don't take any kids out of that age group just because that is my specialty I want to get them ready for TK or pre preschool you know all that good stuff um we cover social awareness we don't just do abc's one two threes yes that's important but in our climate now and with everything we go over social awareness you know we deal with i'm big on earth so we talk a lot about what we can do to preserve our earth because it's important um health is a big thing that we talk about and these are these are little ones who know tons of stuff about just these are complex um these are complex like ideas and thoughts but you can break it down for them so we go over all that we talk about recycling we have a garden so we garden because it's very important I've always loved gardening and I feel like it's very important to teach them how to live somewhat of a sustainable you know lifestyle and gardening why that would be like one of the yeah. first ways like we last year we had so much in our garden we didn't have to buy tomatoes ever because we grew them and so they could pick That's them right dope. here in our backyard um and um i so my i do have a website it's mimi's place uh community i will be changing it soon though but you'll be able to find all that because i'm working on some new things like i said um i have social media um it's called exploring times creativity so exploring and then x creativity that's my um instagram and facebook it's exploring developing minds that's where you can find me um i'm working on being better at posting but i will say i do have a lot of like little art ideas things we did for black history month um just different little projects and stuff because some people are at home homeschooling and they don't have ideas of like things to teach kids and um once my website is further up i'll have some i'll have some more like curriculum more um steps and more instruction on how to teach and you know develop this way of teaching for your children but for now you can still check me out there's still some art and stuff well i'm i'm you just dropped that on me i'm so happy that you're like you're doing that that's so cool that is super cool so if you guys are interested please hit nika up um she i'll leave all of if you guys are watching this the video version of the podcast on my youtube channel i'll leave all of that in the description below but if you guys are listening to this on any platform that you listen to podcasts uh, i will have it in the show notes so you guys can literally just click on it go right over to our website support uh, if you guys are in the san diego area definitely and you guys are looking especially with us getting back into the rhythm of kids you know getting back into going to school and things like that Obviously, you want your babies to be in a place that is safe, especially for those COVID babies. You know, as you know, you're going to need that child care. Right. So um, yeah. if you're in the San Diego area, <laughs> please hit up Nika. You know, as you can see, she sold it on me. If, if I had little babies, I, you know, put them in there right now. But both of my kids are, are in grade school now. So they, they, they reached that that mark. But I appreciate you coming on, Nika. It, it was really refreshing talking to you. Thank um, you. Yeah. I love that you had me. This was so it fun. Was. And I, you know, I've never really talked this much about my yeah. business or myself to like anybody outside of family or my assistant. So it was nice. I appreciate you for inviting me. Let's talk. Let's talk business.